Uh, we're here with Mark Pendergrast, uh, Product Manager of Windows Embedded. Uh, thanks for meeting with us today. We're here thanks, at Josh. the MVP Summit 2011. Um, yep. Tell us a little bit about your background at Microsoft and how you got involved with the Windows Embedded team. Sure. So, in many ways, it's a long, circuitous path to get to where I am today. But I think it all makes sense after you um, sort of hear it out. But many of your listeners and viewers might recognize me from past Media Center um, activities. And I was actually one of the earlier MV MVP-oriented guys um, on the Media Center marketing team way back in 2001, believe it or not. Oh, so, way back. way back. So, it's been yeah. almost 10 years. So I was very involved in the MVP community even back then, and through a number of different roles on, on the Media Center side, I ended up on uh, Windows Home Server most recently, and uh, helped out with that project for, for a while, and ended up just about a year ago on the embedded side. Okay. And in many ways represents sort of a full loop back to what I started off with, because uh, much of the value that we are talking about over on the bedded side, at least for consumers, is based on, guess what, Media Center. So it, it really is uh, a coming home in a ways for, for, for me, and it's really cool. Cool. So how does Media Center fit in with Windows Embedded? Yeah. Typically we think of Windows Embedded in manufacturing and things like that, so how does Media Center play into that? Yeah, it does, and that's because our latest iteration of, of Windows Embedded Standard, and remember, Windows Embedded Standard is the x86 version of Windows. Uh, Windows Embedded. Uh, the other side of the ha of the family and embedded is called uh, Windows Embedded Compact. In fact, just launched today, believe it or not. So it's a big news from from our side. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't have anything to do with it, so I can't take any credit. Um, but the compact side of the family is the the, the OS uh, that's for ARM and MIPS based processors. So formerly known as WinCE. That's what you find in a lot of industrial handheld devices, um, you know, really, really small form factors, etc. Um, but that's not what, what we're focused on on, on the consumer side. Uh, today we're focused uh, on our x86 based operating system, which is embedded standard 7. And as the name implies, it's based on, guess what, Windows 7. And really the only big difference is that we allow manufacturers to customize the image of Windows to suit the purposes of whatever specialized device they're building, whether it's a, a point of sale device or a, uh, a medical equipment or whatever. ROS is pretty much cookie cutter modular approach and allows you know, manufacturers to build and choose different features to suit their needs. Now, guess what comes in Windows 7? Media Center, right? It's one of the most popular features in, in big windows. And we embed that into Windows Embedded Standard 7 as well. And that's the one feature that really opened the doors for us and allowed us to get into the consumer device market as well. Okay. Um, so, can an enthusiast build a Windows Embedded box? It's not an enthusiast story, believe it or not, <laughs> unfortunately. It, it is a focused approach uh, looking at, at OEMs and you know operators, generally large enterprises who build devices for consumers. So it's not as uh, enthusiast a story as say uh, home server was or early media center. So we had specific system builder versions of our product for that. Um, we're a small team. We don't have the resources of big windows. Um, so to make it much more focused and controlled and better for the end user, we have an OEM only approach. Okay. Yeah. So you're targeting the, the companies that are making these boxes, and boxes not, that, not the enthusiasts. Can an enthusiast even get an OEM copy? Is it possible at all? No, it okay. really isn't. It is only an OEM okay. software uh, effort. Now, that being said, I am talking to MVPs and you guys to help broaden the word, broaden awareness of these devices that will be showing up on store shelves, hopefully in the next uh, next couple months. So who are some of the companies that are working on devices with Media Center? Yeah, well, one of the early ones which we showed at CES just a couple months ago uh, is Acer. And Acer actually has two separate efforts going on right now. Um, on the more mainstream low-end side, they have a small little set-top box called a, uh, a Revo 50 that they're, that they're um, 
they showcased at CES and were working actively to get out the door. And on the more enthusiast appealing side, they have a, uh, a product built on the, under the Gateway brand name, also owned by Acer. And that particular box is really more living room form factor, and it includes up to six Seton tuners. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's something that your buddies at Seton are very actively involved with, and I'm particularly excited about that. So these are early OEM products that uh, already been disclosed and, and talked about. Um, we'll have more. Okay. So so uh, someone's going to be able to just walk into a Best Buy and get one of these Acer boxes. That's a, that's that's our hope. Indeed. Okay. That's exactly the kind of retail channel they're looking at. Okay. So once they bring them home. Will the end user be able to customize it at all? Well, they'll certainly be able to add applications, just like they can on the PC side. So, um, again, it depends on what the OEMs do. We give a lot of flexibility to the OEMs to decide just how to download applications. Many of them will be building in, you know, app stores, okay. if you want to call it that, to allow consumers to download more applications over time. Um, so that will be one of the, you know, more interesting ways for end user to to customize it. And there'll be some customization tweaks here and there, but there's it's not the same degree as what an OEM has. Right. Clearly. It's that's really the, the OEM story is the, the primary thing around around customization flexibility. Okay. Um, so if if we get one of these it, it, it's got media center on it, can mm -hmm. we still hook a three sixty up to it? You certainly can extender or any other extenders? If the hardware allows You'll be able to do that. Okay, and all of that's still entirely up to the up to the OEM. Yeah, okay. I can tell you the Nolan box, or sorry, the Gateway box, um, is uh, is going to be super powerful, and you'll be able to run extender sessions. Okay, no problem there. Revo 50, we'll see. You know, it, it's definitely optimized for cost, so they're not throwing a ton of power at this device. So that will be one caveat. We'll see about that one, but the Gateway device for for sure, it'll be. Have we seen any sort of pricing on these? Um, haven't disclosed to me final pricing, so you just have to wait a little bit, a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, any sort of time frame on this? Yeah, uh, they're both going to be looking at holiday products, so okay. we're we're targeting probably September, October time frame when they will be out there and you know on retail store shelves. Okay. So who's doing the media center development? And all. Most of the news that we're hearing now is coming from the embedded team. Yeah. Is just embedded working on Media Center? Now? Uh, well, you know, of course the Windows team is, is certainly very involved in fixing bugs, addressing issues that come up in response to um, customer uh, uh, customer heads up. Um, in terms of active development of new features, we're probably the only team that's actively adding new stuff to Media Center. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say so. Okay. So, what sort of things are you adding to Media Center? Well, I can just touch on a couple things. I can't give you too much because, remember, we don't want to spoil all the surprise for our OEM friends. But some of the things we're doing, I think, are sort of natural extensions of what you expect us to do. We're taking the Windows Media Center code and, and building in things into, say, the first run experience so that it is completely done within a 10-foot shell. So, from startup to shutdown, everything will be operable from a remote control. So no need to go down to a, you know, a, a control panel or to a traditional Windows Explorer mode to get your network settings set up, for example. All that will be done during first boot up time frame. So that's definitely a, a key focus of us. Okay. Any sort of home group integration or anything like that to integrate with the other computers? Anymore? We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so if. People have. Can people buy multiple set-top boxes like this? And oh yeah. They work together at all. You bet. Okay. You bet. What about sharing tuners and things like that? Well, the good news is, again, we rely a lot on what our OEMs do, and specifically the manufacturers who supply to the OEMs, like Seaton. And uh, one of the key features of this new gateway box uh, that Seaton's going to be introducing is the ability to network share um, the tuners. Okay. So those six tuners built into the back, cable card tuners, ATSC tuners, what you all, will be network aware. And so not only other connected media devices, but also other Windows 7 PCs will be able to leverage those tuners on that gateway box. So it really becomes a true entertainment hub in the home. And, and one that you can use to not just you know store your stuff locally onto that device, but also share those tuners out anywhere in the network. So I great. think for an enthusiast, it's a slam dunk. It's really what many people have been asking for for quite some time. What about home server integration? So again, it operates much like a uh, like a like a standard Windows 7 PC. So the 
home server add-in that was uh, released as part of Power Pack 3, I believe, uh, for home server V1 will be supported on our, on our side on the um, on the connected media devices front. So that home server icon that pops up in Media Center, that too will will, will show up on, on our side. Okay. But of course, you have to have a home server on the network and you know make it network aware, all that other stuff. But yeah, that should work okay. just fine. So what about the rest of the world? You know, we talked about cable cards and stuff, and that's great for, for people in America, but yep. what about Europe and, and Australia and all the other places where media centers been? Well, the good news is, is all that global TV broadcast support gets carried into embedded as well. So again, depending on what our OEMs do, they'll be introducing the appropriate tuners for those markets. So two OEMs in Europe that I'll call out that might be of interest for your readers over there, one in Switzerland uh, by the name of Raycom, uh, they already have a uh, Windows embedded device on retail or in online retail um, for the European markets. And that is based on, I believe it's a DVB-T uh, tuner that's built into that device. Uh, another uh, OEM in the UK called Evolve Media has a high-end device with multiple tuners, again, serving uh, the local uh, TV broadcast support for, for the UK market. So you'll see a lot more OEMs doing the same thing. We're talking to a number of them in Japan, China, for example, and a couple other parts in, in, in Asia. Okay. Well, a lot of uh, a lot of American customers are used to just getting a DVR from their cable company. Mm -hmm. Are, is Microsoft or any of the, the, the hardware partners targeting the big cable companies to maybe get these in, yeah. in cable customer hands directly through their cable? We'd love to see that. In fact, I know that's something that's definitely on um, the to-do list of some of our OEM partners. Okay. Um, we, we help them occasionally because we have a lot of different endpoints uh, into the cable companies from different parts of Microsoft, so we're definitely helping those guys out. Um, but again, it really will depend on what our OEMs do and whether they, you know, focus on those channels to, to sell their product. Okay. But I can tell you that that certainly is something that's of interest to me and our business overall because we see there being a lot more volume potential Absolutely. among an operator than even among retail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any announcements we can expect to be coming to any anything that we might be hearing from you anytime soon or any planned announcements? Uh, well, if it was announcement, I wouldn't um, or at least wouldn't be telling you right now. I, I'd say the closest announcements that I'd be able to talk about are um, talking about availability of OEM products okay. for this holiday. So definitely stay tuned in the next couple of months, and you'll, feel, you'll hear more details from our OEMs. Okay, great. So yeah. Well, thanks for meeting with us. Thanks, today. Josh. Appreciate good it. It's good seeing you too. All right. Take care.